are finally here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the game of today. The series of today. We have Dutch versus China. We're going in. Oh, and they are going to play Dutch against China. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the ESOC Spring Championships 2017. Here we have Goodspeed versus Jerome in a best of five. This is going to be the first game on Hudson Bay. It's going to be China versus Dutch. I'm here with Chrissy101 and uh, definitely very excited for this match. Um, and yeah, of course, Goodspeed versus Jerome, one of uh, two of them, both from Holland, from the Netherlands. Both of them have been in the ESOC staff. They have done a lot for the ESOC patch and uh, very frequent posters on ESOC. Definitely familiar with each other, with the game and with ESOC. So very excited for this. Oh, and I immediately spotted some really good treasures already. We have a hundred wood over, oh, a hundred wood over here. Let's check the one hundred and twenty-five wood. The hunts uh, first for a little bit. We oh, have hunts. to make sure those are. Fine. Uh, we have a missing mine in the top. I wait. I, yeah, we have a missing mine in the top. Uh, Miram is missing one mine. Yeah, definitely. You can tell them if you want. Um, Goodspeed's got a mine in the very top of his base here, and Jerome does not, so... Um. <laughs> it's up to Jerome to decide. It's of course Dutch, so he wants this. I really think it's an issue with the 2.2a version of this map, though, because we've been having this problem way too often on Hudson Bay, 2.2a specifically. Yeah. Okay, so we will have to go out of this. I'm, I'm not sure who's in charge of the map development at the moment. I think it's Ricky, right? I'm not quite sure. I will have to ask them later. Well, we'll have to ask someone on the team to like look into 2.2a Hudson Bay. It sucks. Actually, right? I'm going to do that right now before I forget. Uh, this is the wrong ch channel of the Discord. I had such a great intro. <laughs> we have to do it all over. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the ESOC Spring Championships 2017. We are now in the round of 32. 32 people are left. And here we have Goodspeed versus Jerome. Both from the Netherlands, both very experienced with ESOC and with the game and uh, with each other, of course. So it's going to be an awesome series. Here we have game number one on Hudson Bay being played. And uh, we do have China versus you don't miss missing a mine again. What? Why? How is that fair? He's got a, he's got a mine in in the top of his base, but one. Yeah, two, I see. Three. Okay. One, two. Yeah, I, I think this is really just a problem with two point two eight. This is just weird. I never told him to resign, I just told him he's missing a mine. <laughs> okay, so... That's, this is his... No, no, that's just this one. Like, but... I'm, I'm thinking maybe this is... Well, I can't flare anymore, but you have the one to the right of the top trading post, right? I think that was maybe his third one, but that's the one that's also below the trade post for good speed. So Milo has four mines, whereas Jerome has three. Yeah. If you come back in the lobby, we can quickly restart. Are we allowed to tell them to go to 2.2 normal Hudson Bay? I don't know what is the difference is exactly, but I don't think we should. I don't think it's changed also. Okay, here we go again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the ESOC Spring Championships 2017. Here we have 
uh, best of five between Goodspeed and Jerom. We are right now in the round of 32, so 32 contestants left. And here we have two very strong players from the Netherlands facing it off on Hudson Bay in an epic game of Dutch versus China. Mm, let's see if the Hans and mines are okay this time. Um, looks like now <laughs> good speed. I hate to break it to you, but that top main mine is missing again. That's, that's this time for good speed. This time, good speed missing a mine. That's really retarded. It's for China, doesn't matter. They don't need mines. <laughs> Let's see if he. Well, it's up to the players. If they don't mind playing, then. Um, yeah, don't mind. <laughs> 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 okay, well, let's just see what good speed wants to do here because I'm kind of. Can also. Uh, maybe they're just done rehosting all the time. Yeah, none of them has conceded yet, so I guess they are agreeing to. Okay, well, uh, I think it should be fine here also, but uh, we will have to see. Good speed going for 60 food treasure and what has Jerome picked up so far? Good speed got 40. Jerome is working on a 150 coin treasure. Oh great for Dutch of course he already got 50 coin in his base, so that's a total of 203 coin if he can actually get it. Uh, it might get still... contested by the Chinese monk here though. Yeah, but I don't. I think he has got a crack shot ready, so if China is going to be there in time, he may be able to crack shot it. Let's see. Yeah, he's definitely in time, and there he is. Got it. Dautzen Cruz, his explorer, got the 150 coin, and now he's got a total of <laughs> 203 coins. So doesn't have to. What does mine. it actually reference the the Dautzen Cruz? The that's a uh, Dautzen Cruz is a um, very popular Dutch uh, uh, woman, very beautiful looking woman. So it's definitely a. Ah. Reference to her. Okay. You will have to Google her. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, good-looking lady. I wanna say, um, good speed, aging of no, not aging, going for a trade post and a village. So only sending two villagers from his first card, but got a free trade post. Um, and that is of course very important to notice. Good speed lost his XP and lost his trade post. He thinks they are still underrated and underused. And one villager, I think, he can miss for this trade post. So this is definitely something good speed uh, will do. Ooh, you're spotting another very nice treasure over here. 60 wood, yeah, good for getting his banks up. Also, a uh, thing for good speed is his resource crates. He, he really loves them. He's got 600 and 700 coin in second age and 600 and 700 wood. Um, so, really a good speed deck here. Well, Jerome, very standard deck, I think. Nothing <laughs> too yeah, I, I think it's pretty obvious that good speed is going to go to Fortress. If he was planning on playing a more colonial style, of play, like we saw in the Haza show match earlier, he probably would have way fewer industrial cards and a couple more uh, H1 cards. Yeah, definitely. And I don't think uh, H2 is. That's not just not something you see, anyways. So, uh, in high level games, even uh, in the EP, you don't really see China going H2. Um, scouting out the first bank, Jerome getting his hunt in. Let's see what... I, I like what Jerome is doing here, though. He's placing his envoy there to pretend to be the coin mine that's missing for good speed. <laughs> yeah, so when good speed goes there to actually mine, that envoy can take down all the villagers that are going there. So definitely an interesting strategy by him. Yeah, the minimap even kind of looks like a coin mine. <laughs> <laughs> um... Aging with the Summer it Palace, does, but it's yeah. very standard. Standard. Going for ADXP, Jerome is... Let's see what uh, Goodspeed is doing with his hero. He's 
keeps uh, scouting it out. I think he's waiting for the first shipment for from Jerom. Maybe he wants to know whether he's yeah, going. Wood uh, or bank. He's going uh, one bank or seven hundred wood first, so he may be uh, hanging around for that. Um, good speed now, second age. Immediately sending a shipment and still got another shipment in his bank because of the early trade post. So he can actually send two shipments in a row. Um, and 700 wood for your home here. Okay, and let's see if he actually is going to build a stable with that or if he's going very greedy for only more banks or a market. We will have to uh, see. He's definitely going to build at least one bank with this. I don't think he's going to go for the for second sure. one, but at least one with yeah. this. So there Fair it is, for... there's another bank. Um... He might even go for the, the fourth one if he really wants to, but... War Academy for good speed, yeah, that's barracks. quite an early War Academy, I would say. Uh, 700 wood now for good speed, okay, that's interesting. Not 700 coin for an age up, but 700 wood. And he only now sent his next shipment, so we will have to see what it is. But this is definitely non-standard. Bank wagon for your home, building a barracks in the back of his base. What is good speed? Uh, some do? players prefer the 700 wood as China and then gather the coin they need. Yeah, for sure, but um, he's making an army. He's uh, building. Yeah, that that's not standard. <laughs> he's building the old Han army, so he's got some units to harass your home with. I hope he can actually kill this envoy. He should just kill it with his disciple or something. Or wait, he will would actually lose that battle. But this envoy is scouting out his war academy, which is very bad for him. So oh, there is there is more old Han queue actually, and he's shipping nine pikes, so he nine? might be trying to siege down some of these banks. Okay, he's going to the early damage, but what sucks a little bit is that no cavalry from Jerome. He's actually starting skirmisher, which is really bad for these pikes and canoes. So that really sucks for he's good speed. Hit points on this explorer. This explorer is super important. Yeah. Six hundred wood for Jerome. Good speed might have been anticipating stable and hussar start from Jerome, and in that case, the nine pikes would really help him out. But in this case, it's going to be hard to make use of his pikemen with skirmishers behind a wall. So, how is he going to react to this? Uh, nine chicken of the six chickenies coming in, killing off the hero of uh, Jerome. Poor Doubts and Cruz is now dead. Rip in peace. Yeah, rip in peace. Nice looking Dautze Cruz. She's such. Oh, she's so <laughs> hot. Um, what is he going to do with <laughs> Spikeman? Seven Stepper Riders Seven step as the riders. next shipment for. So this is the answer to uh, the skirmishers. And even made the army of Stepper Riders plus uh, Chukonu. So he's got a total of nine Stepper Riders now. So not just the seven. And he's. Very much able to push in now. He's got a quite a big Jerome mass, is going to fortress, but Jerome is going to fortress indeed. And oh no, upgrades on his market yet, so no great code. So these villagers on the top mine will have to look out. Let's see uh, what he's going to do. Ooh. Skirmish is going to the <laughs> side of the wall. <laughs> this gate. He should have. Don't think it's going to matter though. <laughs> yeah, he should have split his calf on both sides of the gate. Now his entire army is coming in. All the pikemen going to fight off these minutemen. Minutemen quickly going down, of course. Yeah, there actually is a lot of siege potential in this army for good speed. So, yeah, Yerum does definitely. have to be somewhat careful. I feel like good speed should maybe try to siege down this gate it, it's difficult to say like it's so awkward if raiders get shipped and they can just dance between the gate but i, I like how he's taking out the banks here to give him tons of experience and he can then ship something like 600 coin or um, 700 coin rather than age up because if you see like he almost has enough food wage up he just needs the 700 coin yeah he's definitely going for an age up here. which is why he's going for these banks he just wants experience and deny some villagers here yeah, and of course really hurting the eco of Jerome. 700 coin now on the floor for good speed, immediately picking it up. And uh, I think he's backing out. Uh, yeah, he knows the shipment popped. is going to be arriving soon, so he's worried. Yes, and 8 skirmishers <laughs> popped. Okay, so it's only skirmishers for him, which is, is a good decision um, because only 3 stepper riders on the field. 
new wonder coming up in the front of his base. <laughs> Porcelain tower. So that's the resource trickle one. Yeah. That's... And yeah, that's a very awkward wonder placement. <laughs> it's quite awkward, yes. So. I mean, Dutch doesn't have a two falcon net shipment or something, so it's not the worst, but. Yeah, he won't have any siege units. So uh, Envoy being taken down. Taken down. Ah, uh, maybe last... that's why he placed it there because he he knew where the envoy was because it was in sight of his buildings. So he was just trying to place it a bit away from where the envoy might possibly scout. Yeah, perhaps. I would have then placed maybe here, but uh, I think it's fine. Yeah, but fine. like if that envoy would scout the base, it would probably go somewhere like here. Yeah, that is true. Um. What is Jerome gonna do? He still had an eco, but he should definitely do some market upgrades now. Doing hunting dogs and um, good speed. Um, I think good speed actually had an eco because he has imperial bureaucracy as well as his other tier twos. So yeah, but if you look at the recalculated unit population, the market upgrades are also counted, right? Or no, they, no, are they not. aren't. Okay, yeah. In that case, good speed might may actually be ahead, especially once his wonder is finished, which is in like two seconds. Oh yeah, <laughs> now he's definitely now, now he's actually quite far ahead. Yeah, now he's ahead. Now it's uh, eight more points to recalculated eco population. So, and only a skirmisher army for Jerome. Twenty three of them. Uh, of course, China has got very weak cavalry, especially in H2, but they do have some good shipments in third age, like the five meteor hammers. So he should go in. Yeah, in H3 they actually have some of the best cavalry in the game. <laughs> yeah, oh, the he doesn't have double-faced armor, actually. Never mind. Meteors are great, but uh, you don't really make a lot of cavalry. You don't have so like these these other units, these iron flails. They're just crappy. And the stepper riders are just fake, fake cavalry. They're not even there. So. Oh, don't know the And the rest made those iron flails against skirmishers. They have splash like gendarmes do. So. Um, I don't think it's the same splash. Actually, it's only one. Well, it's splash. not the same, but they have splash. Is what yeah, I mean. That's true. And they also uh, have a modifier against skirmishers. So. Yeah. Let me take a look, quick look. I mean, at obviously, there. meteor hammers are better. They just do more damage, but yeah, and the meteor hammers, of course, else. do do have the range, so they can always hit the, the skirmishers even when there are other units uh, in between. Yeah. Shame he doesn't have double-faced armor though. That makes the China Cav just insane. They get forty-one percent range resist then. Also increases the hit points, I believe, which is pretty nice because the Chinese Chinese Cav does have relatively low hit points. Meteor Hammer's only having 260. Yeah, definitely. Can get picked off by skirmishers. Um, so, Jerome adding some anti cavalry which is a good choice for this composition of uh, these two ranged units. But Goodspeed definitely uh, getting a nice mass here. Let's see, does he have a consulate yet? Yeah, he does, mm -hmm. on the British. I would imagine so, yeah. He yeah, has he got it a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, he got it here. And Second War uh, Academy being added in. New War Academy. So yeah, he's now looking to push out. And you know, he's housed actually at the moment, so he can't spend his resources. He actually remade those two banks he lost. Yeah, he remade them well, a bit in the back of his base. There. Now nine roaches being shipped, so it may actually be go time for Jerome as well. But I don't know if he's able to actually kill off this army. It's Getting quite large. Oh, you don't need to make something codes. happen because at the moment he's behind an eco, so. Yeah, that is true, but he can get his eco up a little bit by building some more banks. And yeah, he can make one more bank. But if, if no population says Jerome is ahead, the the Imperial Bureaucracy upgrade alone already makes the population from good speed worth more than Jerome's. Yeah, that might perhaps be true. Imperial bureaucracy is such a great upgrade. Okay, one writer for Jerome going forward to scout out and uh, let's and see how And confirm it that is indeed a China ball of death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Adding in some standard army batches here uh, for good speed to add some more uh, arquebuchets to his composition. And now he's got a composition of like seven different units, so that's really hard to actually micro it correctly. On the other hand, the stepper riders are not something you have to care about. Uh, so it's like six units you have to micro. Um, 
I mean, this is this is China. You just attack move your ball of units. <laughs> we need we need micro, right? <laughs> Ooh, but your brother is going back here to pick off a scouting young pikeman. Intervention yeah. being shipped now. You can see this is very high level play, like taking it easy, scouting each other out, and uh, Ooh, being very careful. Now there's careful. a fight going to happen here, though. And if this calf can connect onto the skirmishers, this is going to be huge. Yeah, but he's got the wall going for him and got a lot of Reuters to protect himself. So I think. Oh, but the Reuters are actually blocking his skirmishers from hiding behind the wall. <laughs> I think it should be fine here. He, he hasn't lost too many skirmishers yet. Yeah, um, he's fine. And he's now behind the wall. <laughs> and wood that, actually, though. What did like you say? Like, that's 50 wood per wall, isn't it? Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> Or not, not per wall, uh, per gate, I mean. Yeah, yes, 50 wood per gate and 5 wood per wall segment. Um, so, yeah, try uh, picking off these RQBCs, I'm always almost not able to talk anymore. Picking off some RQBCs, so that's good for him. Uh, let's. If you look at the military unit population, Goodspeed is still so far ahead. He just needs to find a way in. These gates are just very annoying. I hope actually Jeroen will add another wall like here. These walls help him so much with his whole composition as ranged units. Yeah, the problem is like every time these skirmishers get snared here, they lose quite. He loses quite a bit of them. Although a, a decent bunch of the China Cap is dying yeah. as well here. But the Iron Flails and Meteor Hammers now got really close to the skirmishers and he's losing them very quickly. Um, China Calf going down to the, the Reuters, but is it going to be enough? He's still got 22 skirmishers, um, but there's still a big mess of good speed here now. But I think with the 7 more skirmishers that came from Jerome's uh, home city, he should actually be fine here. Uh, let's see how I the think not because. The units Yerom lost were mostly skirmishers, so now it's Reuters against Arc. I mean, there's still decent. Oh, envoys being trained. Even. Five <laughs> envoys. He needs everything he can have, of course, and those things have got range resist, so they are just taking up damage. I think it's actually a good decision. Here. Oh, yeah, <laughs> disciples! <laughs> oh. <laughs> everything. <laughs> envoys and disciples. What a I game. think Yerma is going to hold here, but I'm not sure if it was a good trade for him necessarily. Uh, I think it's pretty decent. He's he's ahead, getting ahead in eco. He's getting so he's got some more market upgrades now for Hussars right. Oh on. yeah, that's that's going to be good here. Yeah, I think he did those Hussars a bit earlier. Are they him. veteran? No, they're not veteran yet. <laughs> No, they're just standard uh, Hussars. I think Goodspeed might need a third War Academy. Yeah, perhaps he's got he a lot of resources team. stacked up. He's got a... Uh, look at this. A raid going <laughs> <Small> on. Raid. <laughs> he's got 800 wood. Why does he have so much wood? I have no idea. Yeah, uh, I think Goodspeed just needed to add in another production facility at some point. He should, yeah, but he should use his wood to build a trade post and, and do more upgra unit upgrades and... And make war academies, but yeah, it's going wow. to be GG here. Nice job, Jerome. Very nice job by Jerome holding the Chinese ball of death here in his base and uh, was able to micro his way out of there with good building placement, even without using the building rotator, which he's a very much a <laughs> fan of. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Interesting strategy, good speed. Uh, Got a little bit of an advantage, I feel like, in the second age, but was never ahead in resources gathered, as you can see here. Uh, only got close while Jorom was uh, just aged. Yeah, maybe, maybe Goodspeed didn't have to push in there yet. He could have tried to contain uh, Jorom more, because without those walls and the buildings, I feel like the China Ball of Death would have been a lot more powerful. Yeah, I think perhaps. Goodspeed might have underestimated just how close his eco was to Jorom's. When he took out those two banks. Yeah, on the other hand, uh, Jerome is... Yeah, Dutch is just going to be uh, very strong in eco if the game goes on for longer, so... I don't know if it's a good idea to just sit back and contain. Well, Jerome was running out of hunt. He only had three um, moves left. Okay, we got 200 and 36 viewers that's a record for today i believe thank you lot. very much for viewing um, 
if you wish to donate please do so you are going to be on the big screen with your text message and I'm hoping we will actually reach our goal of at least uh, 1300 or maybe even more today so be sure to sponsor our next tournament and we are going into the second game team 3 and 4 What's the next map he's asking? I'm quickly going to see in scheduling and your home versus good speed. Oh, and it seems that Ulan against Haza is just going to happen and being streamed on another channel. Yes. So now we're going to see Arizona. Jerome pick first now. What a great first game. I loved it. Zoom I, mirror hype? Yeah, if we are going to see If we're going to see Sue, then I will spank you, will donate even more so. Did you know that civilizations that arose in modern Central America invented at least a dozen uh, writing systems? Civilizations that arose in the modern Central America invented at least a dozen different systems of writing. Okay. Interesting. Did you also know that Plains tribes in North America West built around 50 ceremonial rock rings somewhat similar to Stonehenge and other European rock rings, but at a much smaller scale? Okay, still waiting for you home to pick a sif, so cue epic music. I'm probably thinking of his civilization. Ah, oh, you all had to go to the bathroom. I was nervous. <laughs> Jerome is very nervous, so let's see if he can actually pick a new Sif.
<laughs> I am not a fast thinker, he says. <laughs> well, he's a fast fortresser at least, so... Well, I guess it was more a semi, actually. <laughs> Definitely. No, I think it was a fast fortress. Ah, he made like three batches of skirms, I think? Yeah, that is true. I guess it depends on what you define as a fast fortress these days, of course. <sighs> I'm going to miss the Hazag against Sulan game now, that makes me really sad. <laughs> you can watch it back. Five four three two one or one two three four five. Five four three two one. Okay. Um. And they're currently in game, I believe. Looks like they are ready to go uh, overlay gone and score gone and looks like we're ready to go into this next game Ottoman versus Portuguese when Jorum is ready up I will do the intro and I will click in as well So yeah, it's going to be Otto against Portuguese on Arizona. Both these civs might want to try and go for the TP line. Good speed now, admitting his own mistake. He bet 981 points on himself, winning three games in a row. And he's already <laughs> lost his points because he felt the need to push, push into buildings. He also said in the chat um, that he wrote in his own guide not to push in when you are, can scale up better so he should have read his own <laughs> guide definitely because <laughs> this push was just uh, really what killed the game for him there by the way for the people who want to see both games multi twitch is a thing it does exist I actually know who made it as well I'm decently good friends with him <laughs> I'm uh that's okay. That's cool, by the way. I'm uh, going to do the intro and click in here. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the ESOC Spring Championships of 2017. Here we have Goodspeed versus Jerome. This is now the second game. Jerome won one game so far. We're going to see Portuguese versus Ottoman on the map Arizona. And I'm very excited for this matchup. We are quite far into the tournament. The first game was pretty cool to see. And uh, yeah, let's see what we're going to have here. A very aggressive civilization against one of the more uh, defensive civs, I would say. Um, let's see if the Huns are all right. One, two. Uh, technically speaking, there's one missing Hun, but it's like the seventh Hunt or whatever, or the sixth Hunt. Yeah, I think this is fine. Also, the mines. Yeah, there's like one missing hunt over here. Yeah, that is true. But I think uh, this should be fine to play on. Uh, let's see. Jerome going straight for the trade post and good speed using his spyglass and actually scouted out a treasure and with that. So good for him. Also going for trade post. Okay, so we're going to see a double trade post here. Um, yeah, this will this will be a trade post war for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, right through the middle of the map are these trade posts. So uh, interesting to see. Good speed now on ten out of ten population, but chopping wood so he can actually get out. Uh, Another, another house. Um, yeah, both of them now got a trade post. Uh, I don't know. It was Jerome in time for his first batch. You, I think he was. Good speed. Definitely, definitely was. Jerome already got his first shipment now being sent. So he should be. And that's of course going to be the three villagers. He does have Silk Road. Interesting for getting more um, resources out of your crates. Oh, there's no advanced TP for good speed, actually. No, that's probably why he started with, uh, with Yeah, so he just wants post. to take that TP to deny you from taking the entire line without sieging at least one TP down. Yeah, and of so course So good speed is not going to fight for the TP line as heavily as I thought he would. Well, he, he may. I mean, I mean he yeah, really he likes his, can, He but... really likes his trade posts, so maybe he will use this for a semi-fast fortress or whatever his plan is. Trade posts are just in general very strong, so if you can build one, uh, definitely do that. Um, let's see what other treasures there are. Nothing too important. Both of them got a XP treasure, so that cancels out a little bit. Some dumb treasures on the right, a pup, a big treasure, and a cougar, and a cow. All the treasures on the right, those four, like these, <laughs> to these, to these are all crap. On the top there's 75 food, even more cows. Well, I mean, it's just technically stupid. speaking, this treasure is nice, it's just difficult to take. Yeah, <laughs> good luck. Oh, okay, <laughs> this is interesting. You're on taking another trade post, so... I am caking. <laughs> yeah, I used the Dutch word there. Uh, and uh, it you means to look, by the way, for Dutch. Yeah. Don't speak Dutch. Uh, the whole Twitch chat right now is in Dutch, so that's why I'm getting distracted a little bit. Um, you're on taking. I stop looking at Twitch chat during the stream. Yeah, I should perhaps, but I want to know <laughs> if anything's up. Um, another trade post, so going to have a very strong whatever he's going to do. <laughs> I like how there's a fort in good speeds deck. Maybe Yerom is going to push into that. We will have to see where good speed places his second town center. I think it will be somewhere here, guarding the mine and the the next hunt. But it may also be yeah, like maybe be maybe more between aggressive. these trees could be nice. Oh, that's quite far away from his original town center, I would say. Um, yeah, nice. It just blocks off a choke. I mean, like, it depends on like how aggressive you expect Otto to go, I suppose. Yeah, that is definitely true. And it looks like now he's going to scout out uh, Jerome. His hero is going straight uh, for the town center. 
so he should be able to scout out if he's going for a second age play or something fortress based meanwhile good speed is still aging up almost got two shipments ready by the time he's aged up and i think he will ha have a second shipment ready now yeah there it is uh, ju the, the speed just making the pass before he reaches colonial yes and of course um Oh, 700 coin for Jerome on the floor. So now good speed should now Does get off. scouted by the exploder. Yeah. I think he will go out now then. And um, let's see where his town center is going to go. Yeah. Um, guarding actually two hunts here. And a uh, little bit of um, protection from the tree. So nice job. I think it's a great placement. Barracks uh, going up in the back of his base. Jerome is just going straight for the Fortress Age. And let's see what he can do with that. Yeah, he's not actually taking the, the third TP. I guess he just wants the the TPs for the experience and just faking a stagecoach plan with the Silk Road in his deck. Yeah, I don't know if you actually see that card, but uh, definitely. No, I think it's just to bluff a uh, stagecoach play. Yeah, perhaps. Although he does have wood laying on the floor, so he might still take this third TP. Um, his hero is nearby, but it's also taking uh, some shots on these riders. And good speed going there, he probably scouted out too. So we're gonna see if a contestion of this big treasure here. No, I don't think either player will actually go for this if they know the opponent uh, might contest it. That's a lot of experience. <laughs> Definitely true. Maybe they're just going to both go back and uh, not bother with it. Okay, Jerome, um, building a market, not done any, um, any researches yet. Wondering why he's not doing anything. Maybe he's waiting for another shipment or some more resources. Oh, you know, I'm actually using the fast age up politician. That's not something we usually see from Moto. They prefer the four hussar age up usually. Yes, because the fast age up doesn't really give auto that much because you don't have any time to actually collect any resources or or shipments. So by the time you're fortress age, you still got nothing and. Why did you even age up then? So, and for <laughs> free hussars are usually a lot better for the, your timing. But uh, of course, Jerom has got a plan here. Let's see what he's going to ship next because that's going to be very important. Good speed uh, going for his next hunt and securing it. A chance being the first shipment here. Not being upgraded yet. Also, no market upgrades yet. He's just going for this two, 320 XP. I think that's a, actually a great choice because it's a free shipment, basically. It's so huge in, in this stage of the game. He needs uh, 380 experience for his next shipment. Yeah, this is going to give him that shipment, so... Well, not quite, but together with a single pass on his TPs. Yeah, now he got it. Yeah. So, definitely a good one. A full shipment for him is now 700 experience. So this was a half a shipment. I think it's definitely worth it. Let's see what he's going to do next. These five... He's got... Two Falks. Ooh, the Explorer might do some damage on them here. And definitely got them scouted out, and he's got dragoons running around, so he has to be care very careful here. That hero definitely scouted those falconets. He's now sieging the market. I'm didn't put them in melee with them, to be honest. Yeah, but he uh, he's not going to to catch him. They are now almost safe. No, but every little bit of damage helps. Yeah, definitely true. Uh, Janissaries now veteran, and he's got 15 of them Janissaries against those only eight dragoons. So. Good speed will have to make some more units. Of course, he's got now five Cassadors out, so good for him. He was never able to finish Placer Mines, though, on this market. This market got destroyed before that. Jerome actually doesn't have a market. Uh, he doesn't have any upgrades on this market. I mean, I think he just used it to trade. Oh, Janissaries might be a bit of position here. Yeah, he's yeah, he's, him immediately. he's on point with his micro. 1k coin for Jerome, is it going to be for Mamelukes or just for 
shipping uh, or just for making units, we will have to uh, see. I can't imagine it being anything but the Mamelukes. <laughs> they got nerfed quite hard though, so. That's true. But they are very strong against this Cassador mess, for example. Okay, now going back. I also don't think he has the food to actually use 1k coin. Well, Let's maybe. See, 1k coin, he has a shipment. Yeah, Mamelukes yeah, on the Mamelukes way. Mamelukes on the way. Okay, so that's going to be very strong here. Stable of good speed gone. I don't know why he builds his stable in front of his town center. I never get that. It's just. Yeah, he lost the barracks and the stable already. Just make it like just behind your town center, like right here. And it will be 10 times safer, and your cavalry has to walk longer for one second only. It really doesn't matter. Good speed should garrison uh, villagers in this town center so he can start picking off the falconets with it. It actually does decent damage to falconets if you put 10 villagers in it. Yeah, but it costs a lot of villager seconds for 75 range resist units, so I don't know if. Yeah, but uh, t town center actually somewhat beats two falconets without help. Yeah, but Jerome is not going for the town center, of course. Yeah, smartly. <laughs> Ooh, uh, yeah, he Gastors. should be going for this town center, of course. He can siege it down with Janissaries. Spyglass ability. Let's see where, where it's being Oh, maybe he saw the Mamelukes with that, actually. Uh, I think it was... I think it was being used here? Two organ guns. No, that's probably one he did earlier. Oh, look at this! Are they going to be picked off? Shoot! Oh, half hit points. Oh, he's going to get at least one of them, I think, yeah, here. But one of them the down. Oh, that's... For now. That's and there is the four mams. He did lose some units there. Let's see units lost. Lost three goons in total. So now the mams are here. So he's got an answer for all those annoying Cassadors who can pick up from range. But the goon mass is getting big. 15 goons now. And two organ guns also. So he's got a three unit composition. Let's see if these Mamluks can actually... Oh, his organ guns are probably going to die here though. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, he's just going to he's sacrifice his Mamelukes. So much here. First Mameluk is going to go down here before something even connects with these Dragoons. Oh, and some Goons going in hand attack goons against the other Falconet here. Let's see if the Falconet can take another shot. No, he cannot. And now it's only the Mamelukes in melee versus the Cassadors and the Janissaries on the Dragoons in range. Um, both of them lost the cannons very early in the battle. Only two Mamluks now left, one left now with half HP, but it can tank so much damage, it's insane. Yeah, the problem is now the only units that Yerom has left are Janissaries, and while they are very strong, they can just get kited quite well by these Dragoons, and Yerom just needs, to, or um, Goodspeed just needs to get more Cassadors out, I and mean, it will be very difficult I for uh, Goodspeed to reinforce with anything relevant. Well, actually, the Abus might get, oh wait, no, never mind, those are gen normal Jans, I thought they were yeah. the five Abus shipments. The Dragoons can actually not kite the Janissaries, I feel, because there are too many of them and they've got the same range. But Cassadors actually got more speed also than the Janissaries. So that's definitely. Ooh, the Dragoons can catch this, that would be nice though. <laughs> Let's... Seven Cassador shipment. Seven Cassador, yeah, they can easily kite. They've got more speed and more range than the Janissaries. But they are not going to kite, they're just going to stand there and keep shooting. Janissaries actually going in melee attack with them. Now the Minutemen Abyss being called here. here. Minutemen called only one time, so he's got another two patches of them. Left. He needs to start focusing these Abyss guns though. <laughs> yeah, Janissaries <laughs> are taking quite a bit of damage. Things should go back here. He's taking a lot of damage. Five hussars, okay. Yeah, um, you don't need it. An answer for the uh, One Kestors. fun thing I actually was taught yesterday is that the 0 0.5 multiplier that Abus guns have against cavalry also applies to the dragoons, so they actually don't do that well against dragoons. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, right? I mean. Oh. That oh. is what people would define as a problem. Oh, and it's not scouted. It. That's even a bigger problem. If this would get killed, then well, the good, the dragoons would come after them. Well, I mean, would, th this is also pretty good, but <laughs> he would have lost at least five villages there before the dragoons could get there. Now the dragoons are much closer by, so he's only got lost two villagers, and now Eight he's crossbowmen by uh, good speed. Now he's lost all his hussars for for nothing. For only two villagers. I think Yoram's actually in a lot of trouble here. Yeah, you're like these eight crossbows, as bad as a shipment, is technically speaking, as I 
sure it can actually do decently enough work here. Yeah, I don't think so. They're very all the alone. Boots, I think this is enough. He just needs to go this Janissary Maz and he's good. <laughs> uh, Dragoon's going in Malib here probably with the Abyss. Second batch of Minutemen. Yeah, and now you're And yeah, the, the eight one was able to weaken this Jan mass enough for the Dragoons to clean up. And Iram does call GG, so it's yeah, currently one to one. One to one! What a game, okay. The Mamelukes just not being able to do enough damage, enough goons being made by good speed there. Yeah, if you look at the military unit population could be just got a very good mass here after a while his resource is just so much better than Jerome and he was able to hold the push with the falconets and could turn that into a win where he could keep spamming and Jerome could not Does that map have hunts? <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, now we have another quick downtime and uh, we are waiting for them to pick their new shifts. I actually don't remember how Colorado looks. <laughs> Colorado has lots of hunts, says someone in the chat, so... I wouldn't bread on it. I would just bread, says good speed in the chat, everybody's like, no hunts, I'm not gonna bread. Yeah, but I will. <laughs>
Greater Gator says elevator music. If you donate now, we will have elevator music for the next uh, until the <laughs> video is ended, I think, or uh, until the next game starts. So make sure we have a donation goal at thirteen hundred dollars. We will have elevator music back. Until then, we will have to wait for them. They are now in a lobby picking sifts and stuff. If we get to uh, 90 million dollars, we will convince Ainzam to stream at facecam. I will now show the... Age Vampires! Because looks like we are ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the ESOC Spring Championships. This is Good Speed versus Jerome, a uh, best of five. We have seen two games, it's now 1-2-1. One, one. We're going to see on Colorado, British versus India. I remember what map this is now. Yeah, we have seen it before this weekend. Saving the yes. recorded game. I, I just don't remember them by name. Uh, why did you infiltrate my ranks with spice? That's very rude. Um, I had to. I had no choice. Sorry. Let's take a quick look at the hunts here. Both of them got a starting hunt and a second hunt and a third hunt. Far, far away. So, I guess that's fair. <laughs> and the mines also. Let's see what they are going to do here. We have a trap native scout. 150 coin again. 110 wood. What's with these 150 coin treasures? Yeah, <laughs> seen it three games in a row now. Yeah, the 110 wood is definitely the best treasure here. 90 food also very nice. The rest is just. Don't so underestimate the Nutka Club, man. <laughs> Against the forward base of British, <laughs> I, I guess. No, um. The Nutka Clubman and the 90 food. Nutka Clubman is not that great here, N like the beer cup we see here. But the 90 food, Jorom going straight for that with Olifant Joch. Uh, and Olifant Jong. And Olifant Jong. Um, and good speed uh, scouting around with Monkey, his hero. Uh, of course, 90 food, very nice for India. Will speed off. Up his HR by a lot. Let's see what this villager is gonna do actually. I like think that's just to place the aggro. But why? Why in not in the center? Why is he going to? Because that's where he predicts the forward base from Brit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will have to see uh, how he's why he's walking like this. It's very strange. He he can just. Ah, uh, I, I think he scouted this and realizes he can't actually build the aggro fort there because the trading post line might be ending too close and there's a hunt there. So he goes to the one place where he knows he can put it and that's over there and maybe his villager just pathed in an awkward way. Then I would have put it here to be honest, but... Maybe. Um... Also I just know that there is a treasure tucked into this nook over here. Yeah. He can take it down with his fort later on. The magic this see. actually makes a lot of sense. Like, if you would set up camp in the wild, you would probably put it in a pretty nice position like that. Yeah, definitely. He still got overrun by bear somehow, though, but hey. He tried, yeah, right? It's a nice <laughs> camp. Um, could you be took the 150 coin, so he's got a 160 coin now in total, so he will probably sell that uh, at an early market for more wood. Um, or use it for steel traps. That's also an option. Definitely true, but then still he would build a market uh, and maybe do hunting dogs first. Oh, yeah, he, yeah, he's going for the 120 experience here. <laughs> yeah, he's going for the experience, so going to have his shipments rolling out once he's in the second age and he's halfway there, so that is uh, pretty good for him. And uh, good speed, I don't know, maybe we will see even a wall, he's definitely going to be aging with the tower of course, now there's the Ooh, He market. also got the wood treasure actually. Very nice. He's got the 110 wood, yeah. Great job by him. Going to be almost a free manor house, so almost a free villager. And part of his wall, of course. So, <laughs> going to have a nice early eco with those two big treasures. 
Um, yeah, what is going to do against uh, a very aggressive India fort? Well, it's not that aggressive, but I imagine we will see the five sepoy being sent and being trained. So. Oh, you think this is a sepoy rush? We may actually see that. Yes, let's. I'm not quite sure. Oh, good speed actually trying to hurt this hunt, but got scouted out. Getting harassed a bit. Yeah, going away because of that. So he doesn't want to take any risk by getting killed by sepoy, like like these ones which are coming. Maybe he should uh, start hurting this one then, because otherwise he will have almost no hunts in his base. This. Uh, well, when you said wall, I assumed you meant like manor walls. <laughs> I, I didn't know you were literally meaning a wall. Yeah, he's going for the for the full wall. He probably scouted out this fort here. So if he if he walls up this, this hunt is just free to take for him. Oh, we have a donation. Okay, Suda, a Suda, Suda, Suda donated hundred dollars. Victor underscore S W E was robbed. Thank Wait, you so much. That's... Victor Swe was robbed. Suda just robbed Victor Swe and took. Hundred dollars and donated it. Thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you so much. This Wait, wall, your own did ship five sepoy, but he actually failed a bit and didn't manage to get a full batch of five sepoy out. So yeah, he only so has he's ten. Got a total of ten sepoy now. His wall is unfinished, by the way, so it's very easy to siege down if he wants to. Yeah, and looks like that's what he's going to be doing. Um, good speed, aging up with five hundred foot actually. So no, no tower in his base. How is he even going to get units out? Does he have colonial militia in his deck? He does not. Going to lose, lose even more villages here to the sepoy. We already discussed this map and we knew there were. Ooh, six longbow being shipped here. Okay, but the. But there is an elephant in place to storm them, so. Elephants actually going to do a lot of damage against those longbowmen. So they're all on top of each and other. And the wall does fall. The wall now More longbow being trained here. Okay. Both so the elephants are dead now, though, and I don't think these sepoy can really do very much against nine longbow. No, Jerome will have to go out of here, especially with the town center fire. Also, so now good Goodspeed has to rebuild this wall though and finish this part part off. And uh... and also more importantly, somehow heard this. Or, or, well, actually, maybe this is actually safer. <laughs> Perhaps it is, yes. This is, of course, still very close to his fort. For now, he's fine w with this, but we discussed this map earlier and we said there are no hunts and there are also no berries on this map. Don't pick Brits, but Goodspeed went for it anyways and he will make it happen some way. Um, let's see what units are in queue. Nothing for Goodspeed, no military units in queue. Uh, only steel traps in queue. So Pikemen. <laughs> Yeah, now Pikeman, he just wants to make sure his eco uh, is intact. Of course, he needs some um, protection for his longbow mess, so Pikeman. One of his walls actually choice. is still damaged from the siege, so he might want to look into repairing that if he notices. Yeah, only 600 HP left, so. He okay. is going to run out of hunt here, though. You're Rom playing it so slowly, I love what he's doing, just going around the wall and he may be able to pick off like two villagers for free. I, I like how he's playing it so safely, he knows British is uh, contained and won't have resources for very long so his timer is not really ticking I feel like. Um, India can scale pretty well with the consulate and market upgrades and trickles and now picking yeah, one off another going villager. Down here. Yeah, economic unit uh, oh, not quite getting. Oh wait, no, he gets it now. Killing of these pikemen, but they are. Oh my god, these sea boys just so. don't die. <laughs> oh, finally one goes down. Second one goes down. Oh, third one goes down as well. Actually, you know, I'm not microing the low HP ones to go to the back. Yeah, and in cover mode, those things can take on a lot of shots. Longbowman now actually going for the sea boy. Picking off one of them, and now the second one, I think. Yeah, there it is. So, picked off two more sepoy. Yeah, Rome actually only has tier 1 upgrades for uh, his things. Although, Goodspeed is also missing placer mines and gang saws. So, tier 2 food now coming in for Jerome. Uh, we don't see anything like Imperial Bureaucracy yet, though. 
which is of course very expensive so it costs 150 of all resources which yes is it doesn't quite have the difficult. resources for it quite yet but we may actually see it later good speed ego is a little bit better diplomatic intrigue is now here okay so he's either going for ottoman for boom or british for yeah, his ottoman. army probably going for british and get six Wait, we do see the ottoman oh no, we it's see the ottoman, ottoman. We, yeah. we can see it in text being researched oh yeah i was actually not uh, i couldn't be bothered to switch for it it's only like five seconds right? he is getting the village now and tier two coins so it actually has slightly better market upgrades at the moment yeah, definitely. Um, if you look at the economic units, Goodspeed got two villagers more, only one now, so yeah. Do doesn't have placer mines. But Yerom uh, also has yet. a trickle, so. Yeah, Yerom is actually ahead. Yerom has now. ahead by one population, yeah. What is he doing on the consulate? Oh, now sent four settlers. You can I'm actually. actually quite far ahead in Eco. Yeah, Yerom is now. Um, ahead but that's why you, good speed is making only units and used his 600 wood not to make manor houses but to make even more units and now good speed is very far ahead in military pop so we shouldn't only look at the eco pop even sending six oh, musketeers sure, yeah. so definitely go time for good good speed and he did manage to secure this hunt which is quite important and he might even be able to chase it off of this one yeah, that villager going away just in time. Is Yoram going to... F no, Yoram is not going to fortress or anything. He's just really far behind in military. Yeah, he's put so much resources into his market upgrades and consulate and economy that he doesn't have a lot of units right now. Oh, um, I don't like how Yoram is pushing out here. That seems really greedy. He could lose a lot of things here. Yeah, he has hasn't scouted good speed yet, I think. So it's it could be a good push and very safe, but... Goodspeed is already on the other side, so now between the fort and Jerome's army is Goodspeed's army. So let's see how the, this is going to play out. Pikemen all on the fort and the longbowmen are there to protect against Seapoy. So this fort is definitely going down, unless something like... No, he doesn't even have Tiger Claws. So I don't think uh, he can actually protect this fort here. One more sepoy coming out of the fort, but that's of course not going to make the difference in this fight. Longbowman just taking on all the sepoy. Oh, there we have Sowers on top of the longbowman doing a lot of damage. There are still musketeers left though, and there are in melee. Um, we even have the sentries and irregulars now coming out. The fort is down, 320 XP for good speed being added, but. Yoram did manage to kill off some of the military units, but calling GG there lost his fort and good speed stabilizing. <laughs> I like how he called the minimum from his TC. Yeah, all the way from back there. The sentries and the irregulars. <laughs> good speed stabilizing and killing the fort and killing most of the army of Yoram here. I think Yoram just forgot to make units there. Maybe a bit of a well, mistake. Forgot. Yeah, he got a lot of resources in his bank. I think he should have added another barracks or a stable earlier and used up his resources and scouted out what Good Speed was doing. He could have scouted that Good Speed had such a great army. Resource gathered is pretty close. At the end, Good Speed was ahead again, but military unit count is really what tells the story. Jerome was just not mi building anything. Well, Goodspeed was sending shipments only to make more units. He, he sent 600 wood and he didn't use it on a single manor. He just made more longbowmen and pikemen with it. Which is what won him the game, I feel. Because we had another donation, I will now launch the elevator music again. Which will only go away once we have another donation, so be sure to do donate to get rid of this annoying music. Now going into the fourth game, and that is going to be... Uh, I believe Yerom has to pick first here. Yes, 
guess Jerom does have to pick first here. And it is match point for good speed, so... On the map Bengal we are now gonna play. I totally remember Bengal. Just don't ask me what the map Bengal looks like. I'm sure I'll recognize it immediately when it pops up, but at the moment I just cannot think of how it looks. Also, I'm pretty sure Bengal was vetoed most of the time. Actually, wasn't Bengal vetoed as well? No, no, Malaysia was vetoed for some reason. Yeah, Bengal was not vetoed. The first four maps were not vetoed. I love Malaysia, such a nice map. Who needs hunt anyway? Garja saying in chat, Jerome got a good start, but his follow-up was just very bad. He should have built a lot more Gurkha. If he massed like 25 Gurkha, which he could have done, this would be much easier to hold. He was very greedy with his eco. Yes, I am sad, we are almost at the target for the autumn tournament, so I'm hoping to get the rest of the donations in today, so we can actually make sure we have everything for the next... Oh, I believe Sips have been reset as well. Yeah, so he's picking Dutch again. Um, no, Sips are reset after the fourth game, right? Uh, I think they are reset for the fourth game. Mm, I don't think so. Because it's a best of five, and the sieves reset at the halfway oh, point. Oh, yeah, that is true. Which would be after the third game. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, it's now reset. They played three different civilizations. Oh, good speed just going to play Brit again. <laughs> because what else? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to go into this last, uh, not last, I hope not last at least, game. It's potentially the last though. Yeah, that is true. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now match point for good speed. It's 2-2-1 two, two, for good speed versus your home. Welcome back in this best of five. We're going to see the map Bengal, British versus Dutch, a matchup. Uh, both of these players playing their best civilization, I feel. Good speed, really good at the, the British and Jorom at the Dutch. And um, exciting to see what we will see here. And I immediately let's, recognize the map. What a surprise. Yeah. Let's check out the Hans real quickly. <laughs> Looks like. Good speed, not happy with his coin start. Yeah, <laughs> I get that. Of course, very good for the Dutch, but not really for British. They can't really use the coin unless they build a market. The Hans are much better for Jerome, I feel, but... Actually, he could quite easily start market if he wants to. <laughs> yeah, he's got some small coin treasures. Do you think the Hans are fair? Uh, let's see. I feel like Jerome has got like five Hans on his side. And Euro and Goodspeed only got like... Yeah, 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 like Goodspeed is missing a Hans. Two. Wait, wait, is he? Wait, one, two, three... This is a starting Hans on the edge of the map. Yes, there's elephants, then the the Nilgal at his second... Uh, can we pause the game? Second and is that third. Wait, yeah, no, 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 yeah, he's missing a Hans, he's missing a Hans. Yeah. yeah. A 
It's okay, he says. Okay. Okay. Well, we will just continue this game. I was almost afraid I had to do my intro again. He's starting with his market, like you predicted, uh, not getting any other coin treasures, but he already is now on hunting dogs. So, good eco start for good speed. Jurom uh, is coming out with envoy to get these Bavalo, so definitely a good advantage. Look, look at this. He's actually still shooting the, this and treasure contention here let's see Ooh, and that's a big one <laughs> yeah 100 foot this is definitely big let's see what happens here oh hey, Jerome good. didn't click he didn't click maybe he misclicked or something but he didn't go for his with his hero you have uh, to admit though it's very brave for good speed to just not mind missing a hunt against Dutch <laughs> yeah good be good speed must be very confident in his abilities here. We um, really do have to tell the map crew to take a look at all these 2.2a maps though, because I feel like it's becoming way too often that yeah, perhaps. one thing is missing. Also, good speed just casually starting out with Virginia Company. Yeah, Virginia Company hype. Ladies and gentlemen, we of course know Good Speed is very much a fan of Virginia Company and now he's finally using it in this game against Dutch. He probably thinks Dutch is not going to be going to be too aggressive, so he can be a little bit more greedy and start Virginia Company. And I think that's a good call. He already got hunting dogs. He should definitely get um Gangsol now on his market to upgrade his wood gathering rate. After that, just spam out these houses. Until you got 20 of them. <laughs> Jerome is doing a little bit of shit talk about the EP, the ESOC patch. M perhaps he thinks that uh, some people think Dutch is overpowered, so they need to be nerfed. But I don't think Jerome is in favor of that. So they're trolling each other a little bit. Let's see. I, I think Japan needs to be buffed. To be honest, <laughs> I, I feel like they are too weak. I'm still losing games every now and then. Oh yeah, <laughs> if you're losing games, then definitely. <laughs> There's some uh, nice treasures here, like a 50 coin. I would like to see somebody pick that up, uh, or the 50, uh, 50 wood. Let's uh, see what they're both gonna do here. Good speed. Now finally on Gangsaw and plopping down these manor houses. They now cost only like 87 wood or something or 97 something uh, like that and let's see they're just so cheap so he can spam those down keep building more villagers and keep booming harder and harder good Jerome just uh, going to the build a bank here and uh, probably going to start with 700 wood but we will see how he's going to react to this. Perhaps um, Jerome's hero has scouted out uh, any Virginia company, but I, I think that's very hard to scout actually, because British will make manor houses anyways, so I don't think he uh, will actually have any information here. Good speed going to Jerome's base to scout it out. Uh, now building a second well, that's, bank. That's a lot already. of manners. <laughs> yeah, definitely. 700 wood Although being I'm shipped. not sure how many of them he scouted, of course. Second bank for Eurom as well here. 700 wood, and it does get scouted by good speed, so... I mean, it's no surprise that against Brit Dutch goes 700 wood, but... It's yep. still nice to confirm. Both of them 700 wood right now, and... Look at how many cows Eurom has, though. Yeah, he... That's the strength of the envoy, of course. He can almost make a livestock pen, but... I don't think he will actually do that, but... Oh, it's definitely worth it. Mm, I don't think it's what? definitely worth it, but... <laughs> it could be worth it, I don't know. If he... it means he misses a bank, uh, then it's not really worth it, but... Maybe if he had, he had like... Uh, Lifestyle Pen is only 100 wood, isn't it? No, it's 200 wood. Or is it 200? Yeah. 200? Ah, okay, that's a bit more annoying to work into your build order then. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Good speed still scouting in your home space, but he's just making more banks. Now got the tr three of them up, and good speed is on 200 pop. He's got all his 20 houses maxed out, so he's on uh, 36 villagers already at 
after six minutes, now doing steel traps. Probably place your mines after that. <laughs> Building a barracks. Sending Technically five. Speaking, it is possible he's missing a house because the TC also gives them population. <laughs> that is true. Let's see if I can. Is there a building? I'm going to count them. Don't tap? worry. Uh, <laughs> Isn't there a building tab? Okay. Oh, yeah, good point. You can see it in all units, probably. Yeah, he has all 20. Uh, 20. He's got 20 of them. I was actually looking yeah, at all units. Fast. <laughs> So I could have seen it all that time. Um, five banks by Jerome though. Five banks. So Jerome going just as greedy as good speed. He didn't send. Uh, he just sent one uh, bank wagon, and he's probably not going to send either 700 food or 700 gold. Just going to gather all the resources he needs for an age up. And so is good speed, I think. Um, no place yeah, mines yet. Doing great code, but not building any military units yet. Only got one barracks. Even on berries. Oh, yeah. 600 wood for you. Know, maybe he will go for the livestock pen with that. Yeah, perhaps, but at this oh, point in time. Good speed is going to age with coin, though. Okay, good speed will need his 700 coin to age up a little bit faster, it seems. And uh, Jerome now adding in his market as well. Going to eat some buffaloes. He's so some of his mother buffaloes here. Yeah, gonna eat them so he can age up a little bit quicker. Now, with that 600 wood, going to um, build buildings so he can actually start producing units. So, probably going to build barracks, stable houses. Who do you think has the advantage in Fortress? Dutch or Brit? Well, that's very hard to call it that way, of course. Um, Dutch has got two, uh, doesn't have two Falconets. Brit does have that. And they've got the Longbowman. I think I would give the advantage to Brits. So but you think that Longbow Goon is better than Skirm Raider? I think so, especially if you can add two Falconets at some point. Um, okay. Oh, by the way, if you look at Good Speed's deck, he actually has a very strong industrial and game as well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Infinite to Rockets, even. Both of them. <laughs> Five pikemen. <laughs> Both of them scouting each other's army. Good speed. Only oh, the one raid. pikeman scouting. How big is the chance you won't Virginia <laughs> company? Zero percent, <laughs> of course. And uh, lots of banter here in the chat. I love it. Oh, doesn't Brit have an eight villager shipment in Fortress they could send? But it seems that Good Speed uh, has opted to not put that in his deck. The what card did you say? The 8 villager one. I'm pretty yeah. sure Brit has that, right? Yeah, but I don't think it's too good. It's only 800 food, really, what you sent. And after 10 minutes, you have like 50 villagers anyways. So, unless you're playing crap. So, I don't think it's too good of a card. Um, he's now finally building some units. The one thing I wanted to say about British, they it's a bit harder to make. Uh, longbow goon because you have to gather three different types of resources uh, for skirmisher writer it's a lot easier to spam them so I don't think it's that easy to call this fortress age Jerome was also in fortress age a little bit earlier but really didn't abuse it by spamming a whole lot of units or putting on pressure he is making artillery he has a lot better market upgrades as well though oh artillery found I think he needs that he needs cannons yeah, good speed has got even got lock flume, so really going to be heavy on the wood gathering. Um, even sent one thousand wood. Okay, yeah, look, so look at how greedy the, these shipment orders are. Yeah, seven hundred wood bank wagon, six hundred wood, one thousand wood, and then for Brit, seven hundred wood, five bill, seven hundred coin, one thousand wood. This is better than uh, longbow actually being researched as well now, and some goons being made just in case random hussar come. <laughs> yeah, but. That's uh, actually quite important here that Goodspeed is waiting so long because it will give Jerome the time to actually build uh, some falconets from his um, artillery foundry. He's got five banks of course so he's able to get out a lot of uh, coin and this 1k wood will give him all the wood he needs to actually build the falconets. He even killed the pikeman before it could scout the artillery foundry which is very important. Goodspeed may not have an idea it is there. 
That's a good point, actually, uh, because I don't see any kind of counter to this Falconets. I don't see Nutterly Foundry of his own to perhaps train some Coverins. He is still training goons, though, which is good. Yeah, he is training goons. He is uh, adding another barracks now, so he's got three barracks and one stable. Now trying to push in with his longbowmen, only two falconets out for Dutch, which is not a great number. They can be picked off by the longbowmen because of their yeah, especially huge range. if he yeoman, actually. Yeah. On the other hand, it will be enough to defend against Ooh, this mess. Oh, Hussar here, though. Where? Let me see. There, there's five Hussar for Oh yeah, Rome as five well. Hussar from. I thought the you meant did from good speed. There. They got one shot off. I think uh, Goodspeed has to fall back here. He saw the Falconets and I think he saw the Hussar as well. <laughs> yeah, and that's going to be a little bit too much. Jerome is now hiding these Hussar, probably going all the way around the map. Jerome even has a Culverin. He can uh, actually start raiding here. Goodspeed doesn't have a lot of hunt in his base. He even got a Culverin. Jerome is really preparing for every type of unit Goodspeed can send to him. Besides longbow. <laughs> Besides even artillery from good speed, because let's see, units in queue from good speed is also a culverin. So we're gonna see a little bit of a culverin war here. Very Wow, this is actually going to go into a full blown late game. Uh, Perhaps, yeah. Your um has your rom scouted the goons from good speed? Because he <coughs> is going in with these stars and they're probably going to be picked off very easily. By those uh, he goons. hasn't seen the goons yet, but I would imagine he knows they're there. Yeah, he should know. He definitely should know. Oh, he's going in with his units, and then raid at the same time. Wow, what a sneaky Dutchman! Yeah. On oh, the other hand, actually almost running past the villagers on the mine there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, two culverins for good speed. Three so he will win kills. the culverin war here. Okay, he will definitely win the, win the culverin war. Let's see what is in queue for Jerome. Mm, only five skirmishers and five riders. Falconet in queue for good speed, so now adding even military on his own. Hussars actually got away here, but not for long. Dragoons, of course, got a lot more speed, so half a speed more. Both players posturing here a bit in the middle. Now the Hussars are all gone. That's a shame, but they did kill three villagers. It is something. Yeah, it's pretty good. Recalculated you eco pop. It's actually very close, so this battle is going to be very designing, but this huge batch of of longbow, I don't know if they're actually going to be killed by these, these two falconets. I mean, he's got 80 longbows yeah, longbow. now. And longbow and a big ball are very difficult to deal with, and wow! Four falconets! That's some serious cannon dedication he's here by Goodspeed. Almost no anti cavalry, only the 10 goons and, and 3 pikemen, of course. So if um, Jerome were to make even more Hussar, he's now building another 5. If he went to make another stable and make them to Federan. Then he would have a very easy time dealing with this army, but of course that's too late. The army is already coming in, and he's got almost no hussars. So, how is he going to deal? Oh, with and the Coverin gets picked army? off by the longbow. Yeah, Coverin being picked off now. His Coverin's and some Falconets. hussars, but not veteran. Now the units of uh, Goodspeed going in themselves, but no goons are left for Goodspeed. Only seven of them. And all the Reuters actually in okay, melee Falconets. against the cannons. So the Falconets being picked off very quickly. Still the seven. Still two Falconets. Minutemen for Yerom here in the mix even, but yeah. it's not going to be enough. Yerom is that here. Yeah, that is definitely not going to be enough. Still two Falconets and four the longbowmen are left. So these this was really important for Goodspeed, by the way, because if here. you look, he is completely out of hunt. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, he can hunt here safely, but. Uh, only because he now has got the map control. Yerom adding in another stable. No more Hussar in queue, actually. He really needs more Hussar. I guess he's getting the veteran upgrade. No, he's... Huge oh, Yerom volley needs more Hussar. from good speed on those f skirmishers. Hussar's trying to get a flank on the cannons here. Or maybe... No, uh, no, they're gonna go into raid to try and distract good speed. Very smart. But there's Go Dragoons here already in position. If Goodspeed sees this, Yerom is in a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah. Those Hussars are going to be picked off. Just another 1k <laughs> resources. 
when Goodspeed, I think, and Hussar are off his own now, and the, the Rotary Mice is completely dead. Yeah, no more. Anti-cavalry. Jorma is desperate to try to get to these Falcon oh, but it's not wrong. possible. Skirmishers is taking Actually, some shots on the low AT one. Picking off a Falconet with his Skirmishers, I think that was worth it. But now veteran Hussars are being added into the mix, and I don't know what uh, Jorom can do at this point in the game. Yeah, and he's going to lose both his minds, so good oh, speed yes. is struggling for GG. food. And Jorom does call GG. Good speed wins the series 3 to 1. Congratulations, good speed, on this best of five. And uh, yeah, winning against Jorom three games. To <laughs> I one. was worried after game one, to be honest, he, he says. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, Jorom was not very. Uh, Confident about himself, but neither was good speed. Oh, look at the all resources gathered line. This is so close the entire game, but that fight was just so convincing for good speed. He had an extra falconet and an extra culverin, and he managed to pick off the culverin before the cannon war began. That was huge. He sacrificed quite a bit of longbows early on to pick off that culverin and do some damage against the falconets, but it paid off so well. His cannon is doing so much work in that fight. Yeah, definitely it was really good by him, and uh, yeah, but he did have the more eco. His five banks early on was just too much. Even Virginia Company couldn't handle with it, so that was quite interesting. Congratulations! It good handled speed. it well enough, though. Yeah, it did. Well, you have you have to remember, like those 